Welcome back, plant friends. We're living that semi-hydro life today. Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. Okay, plant friends. So today's episode is on semi-hydro plant life. If you haven't listened to the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast episode on this with Kay from Enrooted Love, I would highly suggest pressing pause here and going and listening to it because basically I'm just going to walk you through. I am not a semi-hydro expert. I talk with Kay. She has tons. Kay's entire um, household is semi-hydro. So for those of you watching and don't know what semi-hydro is, semi-hydro is basically a code word for what's called ha passive hydroponic gardening, aka your plants are completely soil free. So you have these puffed clay balls called LECA balls, L-E-C-A, and basically you are doing hydroponic gardening but passively, so that means without a pump. Kay explains this a lot better than I do, so go listen to the podcast, but basically I am here to show you that I got so inspired from my conversation with her, I am going to take this orchid that I've had growing semi-unsuccessfully, I mean I haven't killed it yet, um, but it hasn't bloomed, I'm going to turn it into semi-hydro as a fun experiment. And also today I accidentally, because I'm a total klutz, have this huge pilea that I totally broke off. I snapped it off, so I'm gonna root it in semi-hydro. Um, so once again, if you're interested in learning what semi-hydro actually is, passive hydroponic gardening, go listen to the podcast episode because I can't get, I'm, I, I'm still so new to it. So you're really just coming along for my semi-hydro experiment ride. This is a total experiment based off of my conversation with Kay. So first off, one thing that I feel like is important to mention is semi-hydro, even in my conversations, feels like it can be a very expensive hobby and plant parent lifestyle, but I ordered everything that I'm about to use today on Amazon and it cost like $22. So basically, I'm like not fancy when it comes to my plant care. I use mostly terracotta pots, as you can see. Um, I do splurge on organic soil, but um, that's pretty much it. I am i don't make crazy soil mixtures. I'm, I'm pretty straightforward. Um, and so if you are interested in maybe experimenting with semi-hydro, it isn't that expensive. It can be expensive if you want it to be, but it doesn't need to be. So I got this whole box bag and I appreciate it's a Ziploc on top of LECA balls so this was like $8.99 on Amazon and then the other thing the more expensive thing was these net pots so this is what basically you pot your plants up in these pots and then you stick them in cash pots that are filled with water or water reservoirs um, those were $13 so altogether this was $22 I'm using pots or containers water reservoirs that I already have um, and you can link, uh, everything is going to be linked below in the show notes on my Amazon storefront if you are interested in doing a fun experiment. So let's just do it. So I had this orchid and actually, let me say, this orchid had like one root when I inherited it. This is what the YouTubers do, right? I've encouraged it to grow a lot of roots. It's grown two new leaves up top. I've had it in orchid bark just sitting in here. Um, and once every couple of weeks, I take it out and I've been soaking it in water. Um, I soak it in water for 12 hours and then put it back. So, like, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to orchids, but um, Orchid 101 certainly helped me. Chris, uh, there's a Bloom and Girl radio episode on Orchid 101, which helped a lot. So, you've got a cash pot. You've got rinsed LECA balls, so I've soaked these in waters. I, I've rinsed them and now they're soaking in water. So Kay says that you take the LECA and you fill the pot like one third of the way full. Then you take your orchid, you're gonna like get those roots nestled down in there and then backfill. They're so funny, they're like, they're, they look like cocoa puffs. Let me get it in there so you can see it. They look like little cocoa puffs. Um, they, they smell a little like, they smell a little sulfury, but she says that you should rinse them to get the dust and other stuff off there. And then she said, you just kind of get in there and you've got to kind of like work those like LECA balls in and around the roots. So shout out to RT1 Home. This is my RT1 Home potting tarp. I do all my planty stuff on. 
Billy would absolutely kill me if I <laughs> was doing this project on our wooden table. Um, all right, so I put, she said you gotta like shimmy shimmy, shimmy shimmy cocoa puff, the Lekka balls in there. All right. She also said with these kind of orchids, um, it's okay if some of the roots grow outside of the medium, but these roots are now buried into the, the Lekka balls. Now the way that semi-hydro works is you fill the water. Um, so this is what's gonna be my water reservoir. Isn't it cute? <laughs> so the orchid is gonna be like her hair. Um, you fill this with some water and this needs to be submerged one third. The bottom one third needs to be submerged in water. Then these Lekka balls, which are like uh, puffed clay balls, are going to absorb and wick the water up and give the plant the water that it needs. Once again, listen to the episode for more information because Kate does a much better job explaining it than me. So I actually have orchid fertilizer. I've never fertilized this orchid before and Kay told me if I want to um, do one fourth of the recommended fertilizer since the orchid is gonna be sitting in it. So I um, have, <laughs> should I YouTube it again? This is Espoma Organics Orchid Fertilizer. I use their indoor houseplant fertilizer as well. So you just tip the bottle over um, and the pre-dosed one quart's worth of fertilizer goes in the top, but I only want to use a fourth of it. So then you don't squeeze the bottle. So I'm going to go like this. So that's one quart's worth of fertilizer. This is a quart of water. So I'm going to pour one fourth of this, about that much, in here and give it a mix up. So this is an organic um, orchid specific fertilizer. So now that this is mixed up, I'm going to fill this so that when I submerge this orchid, um, it's gonna be filled one third up. So I have to take, I guess, displacement into account. The one thing I like about semi-hydro, especially just from talking with Kay, is it's like mad science. <laughs> I'm not that mad science of a plant parent, but like, this is fun. I actually am really enjoying learning this. So, I think that's gonna do it. That's perfectly about a third. So that's it. The beauty of semi-hydro, Kay also has explained, is that like, yes, it takes a little bit of upstart, like you have to buy the hydro balls, you have to mix the water, you have to measure the water, you have to like fill everything, you know, you have to fill it all up, fill it all up. but she says that she changes her water once a month. So if you are a plant parent that travels a lot, like this could be a really great option for you um, if you are into, um, giving nutrients because obviously these Lekka balls don't have nutrients so you do have to fertilize and be really conscientious of the nutrients going into the water that you're giving it but and once again listen to the episode if you're interested in learning more about that um but it could be a really interesting um way of life for plant parents who travel a lot so this is my one semi-hydro oh my god freaking look how cute Look at her funky hair. It's freaking adorable. Okay, so that's my experiment number one. We'll see if Billy, since I'm still traveling, we'll see if Billy can remember. What, but only once a month now we have to change this water. It's freaking amazing. Okay, so I'm a total klutz. And I have this big gorgeous pilea and I totally like knocked it and it snapped off. And Kay says that this is how she roots all of her pileas. So she said that I can literally just, do a um, net pot full of, oh, let me show you. This was $13. It's like 20 um, net pots that are three inches and then little baby net pots. Look at those little guys. So I can like change every, all of my plants to semi-hydro now if I want. Um, so, she said literally all I have to do is stick this in all the way down to the bottom. So I guess that was stupid of me. See, we're just blooming and growing and figuring this all out. 
So she said, stick this down to the bottom. All right, let's do over Maria. So I'm actually just gonna put this in, fill this guy up. And then submerge it in water like you would with semi-hydro and it will root. So this is gonna be a really fun experiment. I've never done semi-hydro before. I'm just super inspired. Kay, it seems to really work for her and her family. The idea of like having a sterile household is really interesting. If you're a hands-on plant parent, if you like measuring fertilizer and measuring um, different nutrients for your water, that could be really fun. If you're not a fan of dirt, some people live semi-hydro life because they feel like it's um, better for pest management. Um, that, you know, you uh, are less likely to get pests. Um, I know people, but also semi-hydro is like a little, um, you know, people have different feelings about it. So this is my little pilea cutting. Now I'm going to put it in this pot, which says, sometimes I wet my plants. <laughs> sometimes, shout out to my friend Heather who gave this to me. Okay, so I filled this with fresh water that I have in here. This is a tester, so I've sunk this in. And I have to factor for displacement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So this is submerged. So we'll see if these experiments work. I'm gonna stick both of them in my um, under some of my grow lights. One in my bookshelf and one in my kitchen, and we'll see. But this is the standard semi hydro setup plan, friends. It can be this simple. So if you're curious in getting some of these Lekka balls, in getting these little um, net pots, all of the semi-hydro stuff that Kay and I talk about is in an Amazon storefront linked below. If you wanna get mad sciencey, pour and measure to your heart's desire. I'm very curious to see how this works. Major win, so you can't really see, but um, she has taught me how to obviously do hydro. She's going to teach you next week on the episode. This has totally rooted. I don't really want to pull the Lekka balls back, but this has completely rooted in semi-hydro. And then the thing about semi-hydro is you only water once a month. And I've struggled with this guy because he's kind of like far too high up. So I put him in semi-hydro, okay? Look at me go. I'm like a crazy person. And these are actually all cutting, so they're rooting. Um, the last semi-hydro passive hydro experiment is my orchid. So as you see, it's in this net pot. And the um, orchid fertilizer is in there. So make sure you check out the episode on the podcast. We learn all of the science. We learn totally why all of this works. We learn exactly what these LECA balls are, L-E-C-A. We learn what that stands for. Um, and it's just a really interesting conversation. And Kay is a really cool person. You should go follow her at In Rooted Love on Instagram. Her entire household is semi-hydro, not one piece, not one particle of soil in her home filled with plants and she also has really adorable um two little boys who love her plants too um so until next time plant friends keep blooming and keep growing mm -hmm.